You've got a few more weeks to see the collaboration on Broadway, extended now through February 5th. Paul Bettany and Jeremy Pope play two of the giants in modern art history. But for another actor in the play, it's practically a miracle that he's on that stage. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. Last February, Eric Jensen complained of a headache and suddenly blacked out. We met up in his Brooklyn home to talk about how that terrifying moment led to his Broadway debut. You're having quite a moment right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, I mean, you it's have... been quite a year, so I'm having quite a yeah. moment. Yeah. So can we just dig right into this? Yes, all my moments are moments now. I I'm thrilled <laughs> that you are with us. Yeah, right on. Because it's you, tell me about this day in February. Well, as you know, my wife Jessica Blank and I are, yeah. are playwrights as well and, and, and TV writers, and uh, we work together. And um, our play Coal Country was yeah. going up at the Cherry Lane Theater, and uh, they were teching. And I was here just hanging out by, my, by myself. Uh, my assistant was upstairs, and I all of a sudden said I, had a, I have a headache, and I had a seizure, and I passed out cold. And um, it turned out that I had a, a, a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a, a, a lot of people refer to it as a brain aneurysm, uh, a big one. And uh, the kind of aneurysm I had, 50% of the people who get it die outright. And of the 50% who survive, 80% uh, either have some cognitive or physical difficulties. And I had none of those after uh, getting my surgery from my amazing, wonderful doctors who saved my life. That's a lot to say. It was say. a lot to say, yeah. It was a lot to happen. And, and um, you know, our show was going up. Yeah. And then, you know, I was in recovery. And then uh, about four weeks had passed, and I was feeling pretty good. And then one of our actors got COVID and Jessica said, you know, we don't have any understudies. You're the only one who knows the part. Do you want to? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And I got up and I ran the show and I ran the part for him for four performances. And then we finally got an understudy in. You know, I've heard a lot of amazing understudy swing stories during COVID, <laughs> but that, one, that, that one's pretty good. Like just recovering from the brain aneurysm. Sure, I'm out. Nothing but respect for wonder studies. That's, that's <laughs> wonder my, studies, uh, that's absolutely. My, uh, that's my mantra, yeah. But then what happened after that is um, we w took a vacation after our show had closed. And we went to London and I went to see my friend Indira Varma and she was in a play with Amelia Clark yeah. from Game of Thrones. And Amelia's had two of these. And wow. uh, she's had two aneurysms during Game of Thrones. And um, she was very quiet about it. And then um, she published an article about it, a very moving article about coming back from it. And I was so inspired uh, that I called my agents when I got back and I was like, listen, I really think we need to up our game here and, and let's like, go for some bigger stuff. And the next thing that came along was the collaboration, which is on Broadway right now, and I'm making my debut. In the collaboration, Jensen plays Bruno Weisskopfberger, the real-life art dealer who brought Basquiat and Warhol together for their divisive joint art show. It's interesting that the first show that I'm doing coming back from this is called The Collaboration because it's my favorite thing to do, first of all. Yeah. But collaboration requires a kind of love. And I love Paul Bettany, and I love Jeremy Pope, and I love Krista Rodriguez, and I love Kwame Kwearma, and I love yeah. Anthony, our writer. And I love being at the theater. And, and so I want to I wanna move anything that I do moving forward from this way out. It's, it's, it's got to have love in it. Or I don't, or, or it's not necessary for me to be me to be there if it doesn't have that. Somebody else can take the take I, the gig, you know. This is Brooklyn. You live in Brooklyn. This yeah, is yeah. Where you make is, your art, so you you're able to have an office and a home, and that's like a luxury. A it's lot like of people. a mom and pop thing. We live literally live above the store, that's and so cool. um, we have our meetings here. Uh, we have production meetings here, and we've written most of our plays from here. So you commute to the city. I mean, I guess it's not that bad of a commute. I was biking to rehearsal until I got rained on, and then I was like, <laughs> okay, I've had it with this. It's time for me to be brave enough. It's winter. To hit the you're doing Broadway again. in the winter yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah, get ready. Exactly. I want to talk to uh, Jessica. I want to go in there and oh, talk let's, to her. Let's Let's do it. Let's talk yeah. to my wife. She's she's much more interesting than me. I promise. <laughs> Alongside wife Jessica Blank, Judson has created a series of interview-based docu-plays that started in 2002 with The Exonerated, which told the story of innocent death row inmates. Since then, they've tackled topics like the U.S. invasion of Iraq, a West Virginia coal mine explosion, and COVID-19 frontline workers. When you visit their home in Brooklyn, the walls are filled with outlines of future projects. I believe that stories change us. They move us and in the ways that they move us, they can actually change our minds, change our thinking, change who we're able to empathize with. So we're choosy with what we write about. Like we think not only about what we're interested in, 
but what telling a story about that thing will do mm. in the world. Bringing public voice to people who may not collectively necessarily be heard um, to make it more than a newspaper story for people is kind of our mission. You two actually fell in love in the very beginning as artists. Like you started working together and you went on like a crazy road trip and that's sort of what led to. The crazy road trip we had in 2000 led to our collaboration. And um, well, actually, I, would say, was... I would say I'm the, in the relationship though, you're, you're kind of the Warhol and I'm the Basquiat. Oh really? Would you, don't you think? I don't know, I think we go back and forth. You don't think so? Uh, I don't know, Andy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we really so. did meet as artists and then we had the idea for our play The Exonerated a month after we met. We got engaged on the road doing the interviews for that play. We got married within a year because collaborating, working together really accelerates everything. It's like we, we kind of looked at each other and it was like, there was no like drama about like, who's gonna get married or how committed are we to each other? Or like whatever, it was like, oh, we've got work to do. Yeah.